My fellow cyberpunks, all you techies, nutrunners, and solos out there, what's up y'all, your dude Sly here, and welcome back to a long overdue Sly Nation cyberpunk news update video. You know, there for a while, news is coming out hot and heavy, from E3 to PAX, live streams to Gamescom, and all the while, larger gaming networks of all kinds had articles and interviews in which a little more detail could be pulled out, but then all of a sudden, like Slughorn's goldfish, poof. News came to a standstill, as well as my news videos. So instead of making videos every time some dev from CDPR farted, I decided to wait for some action, and things are finally starting to stir up again. With the upcoming release of a new Half-Life game, albeit a VR Half-Life game, it launches barely a month before Cyberpunk, and for some reason, others see this as a big deal, even a threat. And then all of a sudden, news starts to flow with Cyberpunk again. The Half-Life game itself is called Half-Life Alex, and it's one of the first major VR games that's getting attention. It's not a side game or another studio licensing the name. This is the first VR game taking seriously as a headliner. Given the rabid fan base of Half-Life fans, it's going to be huge. But a month? I mean, guys, that's plenty of time to sink your teeth into Half-Life and then move on to Cyberpunk. So why it's being shown as a threat? Not really sure, but hey, if it stirs up news, I'm always up for it. Alright guys, so let's dive into some of the bigger headlines from around the interwebs, as well as some of the things I missed in the past, and of course, some more recent news. First up, a new book is coming, available for pre-order on Amazon starting today, which is December 3rd. You can order The World of Cyberpunk 2077, a hardcover deluxe edition, for 99 bucks. It comes with what you see in the description, and similar to a video I created a few months ago, it's pretty much a general overview of the Cyberpunk universe. Politics, locations, history, language, technology, I mean the works. Unless you were big into tabletop RPGs, you might have never even heard the name Pondsmith or Cyberpunk. But now, it's pretty much becoming a household name. However, this universe has been constantly growing since the 80s, and it's absolutely packed with lore, history, technology, and big corporations, important names, etc. Which is why I created that history video to begin with, but this book will more than likely be the place to go to catch up on everything cyberpunk. If you're a lore nerd in other games, then definitely keep an eye out for this one. However, this book isn't the only thing stirring the masses. Along with it, an art book features which what I think is a section of Night City, or at least a featureless street map of downtown Night City. You can see it here on the cover of the book, but there's a better picture which you can see from the art book which you see right here. Now we know the game will be divided into zones or districts and that you can leave the city, but most of the game will be based here. CDPR has stated multiple times that the map is quite smaller than Witcher 3's, but in terms of square footage or usable space, it's supposed to be pretty big. You know, with there are real buildings, complete with floors, multiple levels throughout Night City, including basements, subways, tunnels, etc. So while there are those that think this map here is all of it, there are of course others who think this is simply a snapshot. Now personally, I think this map is actually an overview of one district and not the entire thing. In other interviews, Dev talked about the different districts within the city, and I can't pinpoint where exactly I heard it, but I do remember a couple of these districts are off kind of by themselves. And in this map, all you see here is downtown, as well as a quite a few roads that are cut off, which lead in every direction and all over the place. And I think there will be way more above and below this. Another article which I talked about in my other news videos from a few months ago mentioned a dam where the city gets its power from, which is out in the desert by itself, and that this will also be something you can actually go see and visit. So I can imagine the power plant being an entire screen away off to the east, or perhaps the map is broken up into districts, and you click like a vague outline of an area in the world map, and then it zooms into what you see here. To see other areas, you back out, click another district, and it'll zoom into a different part. Once again, guys, these are all guesses, but this is as close to an official look at Night City as we're going to get for quite a while. And by the way, if you wish to check out the lore book or other cyberpunk stuff, check out the links down below. And also a quick side note about that, I do love supporting CDPR, but their samurai jacket is a little lame. There's another link down there of a leather jacket, a samurai jacket, that looks effing amazing. The link is also down below, and no, I am not paid to promote this, nor am I getting a cut, I just think that it looks freaking insane. So while that was really the main headline, let's check out the other nifty things floating around in the news, and the steamiest of them all, mocap sex. Not only will Cyberpunk 2077 feature sex scenes from a first person point of view, 
a la VR porn style, but CDPR held mocap sessions of all the sex goodness you're going to get to see in game. You know, none of that back alley, janky, fresh out of school porn graphics. No, 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 no. This is going to be as lifelike as possible because it pretty much was lifelike. So props to CDPR for going the extra distance, but was mocap sessions really necessary? I mean, <laughs> whoever the guy was that was wearing that tight black suit in front of all of those devs, props to him because I'm sure it would be quite hard to <laughs> to keep your cool while capturing a scene like that. I personally would be pitching tents all day. <laughs> so speaking of hard, let's move on guys <laughs> to Cybertruck. Besides the broken windows, which I still give Elon props for doing live on stage, apparently among other cameos in game, Cybertruck will also be making an appearance at some point within Night City. So definitely keep a lookout for that. And by the way, in case you're wondering about having to find your car, Every time you park it somewhere in game and then you end up exploring, there is an upgrade available in game that lets you summon your car to your location. So don't worry about losing it or parking far away and have to go find it again. Start thinking of your car kind of like an updated Roach from Witcher 3. Alright y'all, and moving on towards the end, a couple more topics left, first of which is modding. Now all CD Projekt Red fans know that CDPR ports its modding community heavily. Besides Bethesda with Doom and Skyrim, the Witcher has a huge modding community, and they can make a huge difference in game, especially ones that have dev support. If you're a Mass Effect fan and somewhat PC savvy, try and download some of the Mass Effect mods. And I can't remember the name, but there is one ginormous mod that encompasses all of the games and it put, pretty much puts a ton of community mods into one gigantic folder, which pretty much overhauls you know, all of the games. It is absolutely incredible, and The Witcher has something similar as well. So one would think that Cyberpunk would allow it on an official level. According to Marcin Momot in a Cyberpunk forum thread, modders asked if Cyberpunk would support them like they did with Witcher 3 and in the Witcher series, and so far they have not officially said yes early on like they did with The Witcher. But Beaumont said it's a topic they plan to revisit once the game has shipped all of its first player content. Now I added this in because I've been asked about mods quite a few times and if they're going to be officially supported. So there you have it. Looking at the long term, we now know that multiplayer is yes indeed on the way and that microtransactions will not be present in the main game. But so far, no official word on if that's going to be spread to multiplayer. According to a recent PC Gamer article, microtransactions are still something on the table and something CDPR is considering for its online part of Cyberpunk. Its multiplayer mode is dropping much later after launch, still no word on exactly when. Now there will be two different types of DLCs as well. We'll have big expansions, similar in scope and size to the Witcher 3 style DLCs such as Blood and Wine, but there will also be free smaller updates that will be available to everyone. So that's a lot of content to see released before multiplayer drops, and hopefully we'll get word on mods here soon as well. Also, as a last minute edit in, multiplayer has been confirmed to drop after every single single player content has been delivered. DLC, update, etc. So once all of that has dropped, multiplayer will then arrive. Alright y'all, and the last two things to mention, first up, Google Stadia. Now whether or not streaming games is a technology that is 100% ready and bug free, that's another video worth of content, but like it or not, it's here, and as soon as internet speeds, ISPs, and connections can catch up, it's going to be a widely used service all over the world, and with that, you can look forward to playing Cyberpunk on Google Stadia when it launches in April of next year, so it is indeed coming to Google Stadia. And finally guys, size and scope of story. According to a recent Polish gaming article, there's enough dialogue within the story to fill two thick books worth. This is also not counting side items, side conversations, vendors, comments, background talk, etc. And that, my friends, about wraps us up. Once again, if you started following my channel for Cyberpunk news videos, sorry about dropping off there for a while, but there really wasn't much to report on the past month or so. And if there was, it was pretty much 100% speculation, and I kind of try to stay away from making those kind of videos that are purely speculatory. Unless it's all in good fun. But with a game as hot as Cyberpunk, you never know where guessing might lead you. So for now, guys, that is all I have for you. But be sure to keep checking back as we get ever closer to not only the year 2020, but April of 2020, which will be an exciting time for sure. In the meantime, if you're an RPG story-loving gamer, then definitely check out Jedi Fallen Order, as it is by far not only the best Star Wars game to date, but it is the best ranked up there on my top three list for 2019. Without a doubt, a game you need to play if you haven't already. But I'm out of here, y'all. As always, thank you for not only watching, but for supporting Sly Nation. Now, I couldn't keep this channel alive if it were not for you, so thank you guys. I really do mean that. 
To keep helping, be sure to share these videos with families and friends and be sure to subscribe. All these YouTube changes are hurting small channels like mine, even crushing some out of existence. So any support, liking, subbing, commenting, turning off ad blocker, donating, sharing, all of that guys goes a very, very long way to help offset those changes. As always, thank you for watching, and if you're new to my channel, then welcome my friend, hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe for plenty more Cyberpunk videos as well as other gaming vids like Destiny, Mass Effect, Anthem, Dragon Age, Star Wars, and much, much more. Spank the thumbs up, but only if you enjoyed yourself, and keep those eyes open for more Cyberpunk videos coming out here soon, but until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll see you all in the next one.